Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thank you very much for joining us today for this latest eWeek eSpeak session. It's a series of conversations with IT thought leaders from every corner of the business. Today, our guest, our special guest is Kevin Dallas, like the city in Texas. And he's this new CEO, relatively new CEO of Wind River. He's been in the job for one year. Kevin, welcome. Thank you, Chris. And um, are you actually in Dallas today? Where are you? <laughs> actually, Kevin Dallas from England, living in Seattle. That's where I am. Is that where you are? Or all over the place? So I'm actually in Seattle. Uh, so Wind River, as you know, is based in Alameda. Right. Uh, I spent a whopping two weeks in role in Alameda. And mm -hmm. the rest of that time has been spent in Seattle, unfortunately, with the, the lockdown situation. Oh, I know it. Isn't that something? We're getting we're getting real tired of this. We got to get out of this syndrome. Well, Lock, you will. Lockdown syndrome. We're getting uh, down here in the Bay Area. We're getting a lot of the Seattle type of rain, but of course we need it. You know, you guys up in Seattle don't need the rain, right? <laughs> no, we don't. And it's also getting a little bit more mild here. So I think, uh, you know, our, our rain is moving down to you and we're getting more of your sun up here. So I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. We're switching it up. Tell me a little bit about your background, uh, Kevin. So I'm, I'm actually originally from the UK, mm -hmm. uh, born and raised there, uh, graduated in electrical electronic engineering, uh, worked in the semiconductor industry initially um, in companies like National Semiconductor NVIDIA, uh, then spent about just over 20 years with Microsoft in different areas from PC software to embedded devices and then most recently in the cloud and AI group. And then uh, took the role with Wind River in February of 2020, um, two months before COVID lockdown, uh, yeah. took the role with, with Wind River and um, you know, having a, a fantastic time. Yeah, tell us about the high level of Wind River, what it does uh, yeah. for, us, for our viewers that aren't familiar with the company. Yeah, Wind River is a 40 year old company for those that don't know. And it's a leader in the area of real-time operating systems with more than 2 billion endpoints powered by Wind River software. And uh, the company was previously owned by Intel. Uh, TPG, a private equity company, acquired Wind River from Intel about 24 months ago. And we are now a private equity owned company. And what we're looking to do is to essentially um, transform the company into a leader in intelligent systems. So we have been a leader in real-time operating systems. We are the number one in that area. And we're looking to transform the company into the number one in intelligent system software. Yeah. Can you define what a difference, the difference is between an intelligent system at the edge and an intelligent system, say in a data center or somewhere else? Yes. Well, one of the things that we're seeing in the industry is this huge shift towards digital, huge shift towards AI-infused applications. Uh, you, you've seen it primarily in the IT departments to date. I call that the first wave of digital transformation. Now what we're entering into is what we call the second wave of digital transformation, which is where a lot of these digital cloud-native AI capabilities are now moving to the edge. So when you look at autonomous vehicles, robots, drones. Um, these are intelligent systems that are really transforming many industries. And these are intelligent systems that require software that runs right at the edge on the device, in the far edge cloud, on the private cloud, all the way through to the public cloud. So you're having these new distributed systems now that are running to deliver on these new advanced scenarios. Uh, really exciting times because we're now living in a, in a time when the advanced technologies to make these systems a reality around cloud, data processing, and AI are now available uh, with, again, small, low-cost hardware. So now we can actually deliver these new intelligent systems. Yeah. About six years ago, five, six years ago, I wrote a column. I wasn't the only one, but I definitely remind um remember writing about this convergence of, of things that we had happening all at once. We had the network pipes that were could carry all this. We had the storage, the unlimited storage and basically unlimited storage in the cloud. 
we had these new chips that were running cooler, but faster and, and carrying better loads. And um, I mean, everything about IT was converging into this, this, this spot, this, this window of opportunity that you could do things like this. You yes. could take these heavy applications with, uh, with intelligence in them, machine learning, uh, aspects of machine learning in them. And they didn't have to run in a huge, powerful server in one location. That's you can right. run them in all different places. And a good example is our smartphones, for God's sake. Yes. Look, look what we're running on our, on our, cell, our, 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 our smartphones right now. And um, so that's what Wind River has been like a leader in is, is being able to manage uh, and, and its platform manages all these things wherever the enterprise needs them to be managed, right? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, if, if I go back to when I was at Microsoft, um, I see the, the last four years at Microsoft, I had the, the pleasure of working in cloud and AI with leaders like Scott Guthrie and obviously Satya in terms of growing that Azure business. And it was, it was amazing working with customers to help them really transform their businesses through the cloud. And what I realized, I think during my last 18 months at Microsoft, is as we were engaging with these customers across these industries, the systems that they were building were becoming more and more distributed. And the, the systems that they needed were not just in the IT side of their companies, but they wanted to move to the OT side of their companies. Because ultimately there are business outcomes around transforming their products to deliver new services. They wanted to op optimize their operations or they wanted to really engage with customers differently. So in order to enable those outcomes, this is where the advanced technologies of cloud really came in. So while I was at Microsoft, really growing that Azure business uh, was just a phenomenal experience. But then I realized at the end of my tenure that the most interesting thing or most important thing about the cloud was now becoming the edge. And to your point, when you have edge devices, you know, like a, a mobile phone that I have here that is actually running a data center inside of it, or an autonomous vehicle, again, a data center on wheels, you now are entering a world where more and more compute, data processing, AI, and machine learning can actually run at the edge. Right. And that is the, the transition or the secular trend that we at Wind River are looking to enable. Right. And how does, how does Wind River work? How, is it a cloud service or is it, a, is it that? Plus, uh, if you need to run it, if you need to run it in a server in a private cloud or in a data center, can you do that too? Well, when you look at the software and tools requirements of these intelligent systems, uh, there's a need to be able to you know, develop your system. And that when I say develop the system, meaning create a platform that can run both on the device, the far edge cloud, or in the public cloud, to be able to then deploy your software across your intelligent systems assets, then to be able to operate your intelligent system. And the really interesting thing about these systems is that they are enabled with what we call a digital feedback loop, where there's the ability to communicate with your product, to be able to pull, pull out telemetry information, analyze that data, reason on that data, make decisions, and as a result, take an action again at the device. So we call that that digital feedback loop, which is becoming essential for these new intelligent systems because the data itself has become the lifeblood of that intelligent system. So what we're doing at Wind River is we're, we are delivering what we call Wind River Studio. It's a new offering and it's gonna be the first in the industry that delivers a platform and services for the development, deployment, operations, and servicing of your intelligent system. So for that full life cycle, we'll have one platform offering. I see, and that's what the press release is about this week, isn't it? Um, introducing the studio. And I see here too that uh, you've, you've got a deal with Verizon. How, what's that all about? Yeah, there are many scenarios that will be enabled in the future on intelligent systems. We look at autonomous vehicles, drones, robotics, that will require 5G. Uh, so we have a partnership with Verizon that is going to essentially enable 5G to be used in these types of scenarios, particularly with enterprise customers. 
So that's the ultimate objective of the collaboration. What we're providing into this partnership is the, the industry's highest performance, lowest latency, 5G VRAN infrastructure, cloud infrastructure. We provide that into Verizon to run the 5G VRAN solution. This provides this virtualized cloud. It also provides a container architecture that they need for their applications. In addition, the analytics that you need to be able to reason on data, we also provide that capability as well. Well, you got the whole enchilada there, don't you? You can develop on it, you can maintain it, you can up, upgrade it, you can take features. Do you have like a, a menu of features that uh, a user can, can, can buy or does it all come together in one package? It comes together in one unified environment. Uh, we call it our, our DevSecOps environment, mm -hmm. where you're going to be able to, in this environment, with very few clicks, be able to, again, configure the platform that you want to use, like which operating system you want to use on the actual device, what kind of cloud capabilities do you actually need? Again, what kind of AI framework would you need? Uh, configure my digital switch twin for simulation as well. Then how do I actually want to deploy it? with zero touch. So we give you this ability through a single pane of glass to be able to deploy your images to your device. And then of course, single pane of glass again, to be able to actually consume data, analyze that data, make decisions and take action at the device. And then of course you have the servicing and maintenance. So again, it's this integrated environment that you go into versus today, a set of very fragmented tools. This is a unified environment where you can actually build your intelligent system from the platform to the application and also the data management. Wow. And so I guess a whole team would be able to work on this at the same time, right? Because there'd be somebody that might be developing um, a new feature or something on it on one end of it. And then somebody would be managing um, endpoints on another and somebody might be, uh, well, I don't know, doing patches or something on another. So they would all be working on the same application at the same time, is that right? Yeah, this is very, very powerful because if you look at many customers today, you've got your development department and you have operations that takes care of deployment and operations. And then you have your maintenance organization, all using very disparate separate tools, all having different data sources. Right. Now you'll have this integrated environment where you can actually have these departments all working together in an integrated environment. Now this becomes really critical because when you look at these intelligent systems, um, they are becoming more and more mission critical, meaning there's real-time capabilities needed, there's high availability needed, security and safety are all key requirements for these intelligent systems. So we call them mission critical. And in every industry from telco, aerospace and defense, industrial, medical, these intelligent systems are becoming mission critical. So we as a company, We've been around for 40 years. Uh, we lead in terms of our proposition around real-time reliability, safety, and security. So we're bringing that domain to these new intelligence systems for mission-critical systems. Okay, Kevin, you just got about a minute left. Can you just kind of sit back and tell me a trend that you're seeing here in your field that uh, customers are asking you for, maybe a feature they're asking you for, or some other kind of trend? Yeah, there's, there's, there's actually a couple of trends that we are seeing. Um, one is uh, really provide me with a, a open DevSecOps environment to be able to build this type of distributed system. Not, a, not just a client only system, but a distributed system that can run across many compute nodes. Provide me with that kind of environment that allows me to build it in a highly secure way. The second major ask we're seeing is the ability to realize the value of that data. So with these intelligent systems, without data, you don't have AI. So what the customers are asking for is give me a way to, be, to enable a feedback loop where I can ingest my data from my products, visualize that data, analyze that data, and even be able to run machine learning and AI on that data to deliver more personalized contextual experiences for my customer. So it's the DevSecOps environment and given the ability to unlock their data value through the digital feedback loop. Those are the main two trends that we're seeing. Great, thanks, Kevin, very much. Thank you for the overview of the company and uh, telling us about yourself. And uh, it looks like to me, uh, Wind, Wind River is really in the right lane 
uh, going forward, uh, you know, at this part of the, of the 21st century. I mean, you're, this is where it's all going, is to the edge. It's where computing is going, and you're right there with it. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you. We very much look forward to working with our customers and, and realizing their digital futures. Thank you. Yeah, great. For everybody following along to the end here, thank you very much for joining us, and have a great rest of your e-week. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.